problems exist within processes. In one of the basic statements in terms of modern quality, we say all work is done in processes. When we observe that, when the process is performing the way we expect it to or the way we design to, we say there's no problem. But when something is doing what we don't want it to, then we say there's a problem. And what we see in this process we're going to talk about in terms of Lean Six Sigma that you use as a green belt is when the process is operating the way we have it, it's standard work. When something goes wrong, we're not doing work according to standard. We need to bring it back to standard work or find an improved way of dealing with it. So one of the fundamentals in terms of Six Sigma is the concept of structured problem solving. Now, when we take a look at a process, what we see is that processes are the routine work that the organization's doing. And there's three different components. There's efficiency, which is like cycle time, effectiveness, the level of output or the productivity, as well as economics or the cost of the transactions through which the process is operating. Productivity only counts if all of the results meet all of those re required delivery requirements, cycle time, productivity, the right products, the right time, and to the performance requirements of the customers. So we take a look at our processes and we say, well, how does a process really flow? We can take a look and we say, what we think it is. The problem with human beings is when we look at a process and design it, if I'm abstract and I'm in a room, for instance, in a classroom designing the process, I only think of the things that go right in the process. I tend to think of all of those things. Now, without any external stimulation, I don't actually start thinking about what can go wrong and then what do we do? And so if we think of the process as it actually is, we start seeing usually the way it's being executed in the real world is much different than the ideal case that we created. And so when we actually want the process to be is the ideal case, but streamlined. So if we take a look at this, one of the things we have to say is, well, what do we really know about the process? Well, here's an observable. If we have customers looking at our organization or the way we do our work, they put money in, they want their products or service deliverables out. To them, our organization or process is a black box. They don't know all the things that are doing or going on inside. And what we see though, is we see all the detail in the black box and we lose the customer's perspective. So there's gonna be a challenge. How do we transition the customer's view and link it to our view in terms of the detail of the process to assure it's delivering the right type of performance to us? Well, most of us in a process only know what we're doing in our group. The rest of what's happening in the organization is kind of foggy. There may be departments delivering work to us, departments receiving work from us, and we only know really what we're doing. We don't have a complete description of how everything is affecting things or how they actually document their work or the performance criteria for their work. So if we want to get beyond this highly divisive uh, understanding of processes, we have to get past all of these divisions. So the first step is making sure all the processes are visible. So we understand the complete as is state of the work. What's actually happening? How is work being defined? What is the quality characteristics of the work? How well is that work being delivered? How fast is it being done? And so forth. And also, what is the sequence in which it's naturally happening? And what we see is most organizations have been designed in terms of functional structure. And that's mean talking about how do we deliver particular types of jobs, like a purchasing organization. But we see purchasing people may be involved in sourcing at the beginning of an R&D process, as well as buying in the production process. So that function may actually be working several different places in the end-to-end -end life cycle development of the product. And so the next thing we have to do is understand that life cycle and then delegate functions to the process steps. And as we do that, we start seeing different competences are required in different areas, different skills, different resources. And then once we've got that, we have to take a structured walk through the process and understand how is value actually being delivered at each of those steps in the work. And we should classify that work. Is this delivering value that's perceived by the customer? Is this required work? We have to do it, but the customer really wouldn't pay for it if they saw us doing it. Or is this wasted work? We're doing it because we want to do it or to have traditionally done it, but not necessarily because it's something that the customer needs or even values.
And so the idea is we should staple ourselves to that particular process, follow it through each step as if we're on the work order and observing exactly what's happening in the process work. In Japan, they call this genichi genbutsu. Go and see, go to the gemba, the place where the real things are happening. Discover the real facts, discover the real things, understand the real theory of what's happening, and then understand how do we get this process to a state of real control. Each of those realities is part of what happens in the gemba. Now, the gemba is a place where real things go on. And when we go to the gemba, we have to understand we're looking for problems. But many times, management will say, no, I have a solution. We have an IT system. And that's a solution in search of a problem. And now I finally find the excuse to implement it. Well, that's not the approach we want to take in Six Sigma. In Six Sigma, what we want to do is take the problem at its highest level of abstraction, break it down into component parts, understand what are the elements of those component parts that can be actually attacked by our organization by specific actions at the work process level, what would be solutions for those, and then how do we build that up so it's an effective flowing system solution across the whole work. And so the job that we have is first decomposing the problem into the pieces, examining each of those pieces, and then recomposing the set of solutions into a total system solution. So we talk about structured problem solving, that's what we're talking about. Understanding how the process flows, where do we see all the components of the problem, how do they lie in there, resolving the issues, and then working to put them back together in a system that does deliver the performance that we were targeting at the very beginning. So now you understand the thinking process behind the Six Sigma methodology. So let's now start turning and thinking about what do we mean by this idea of DMAIC and how it works in a process.